Fan what is cracking, it is your girl Lillian Francis. So Ableton 12 is finally out and along with Ableton 12 are a bunch of new MIDI tools. And so I'm doing a three part video series on our different MIDI tools. And this specific video is about our pitch and time utilities. It's relatively similar to what we used to have in our clip view, but just a little bit different. So we're gonna go over some of those differences today. All right fam, let us dive right in, <gasps> splash. All right, fam, welcome to Ableton 12. We are out here and this is our new clip view. So it looks basically same, same, kind of different. So y'all can see here that what used to be our notes panel is now our pitch and time panel. We have our pitch and then we have our time down here. So let's go ahead and create a little bit of a chord progression and then we can check out this area over here and see what our functions are. All right, so the first thing we got here is our transpose tool. What we can do if we select any or all notes, let's do command A to select all notes, we can really easily transform them up and down. And the reason you'd wanna use this instead of just selecting command A, all of your notes, and then moving them up and down, is that when you move them up and down with the key on your computer, it maintains all of the relationships between the notes, right? So you have like a major third here and you have a minor third here, it will maintain all those relationships. But if you move it using the transpose feature, it will change those relationships. So as you're transposing up and down, they remain inside of your scale. All right, the next thing that we have here is fit to scale. And this is helpful if you're just drawing in notes and you want them to fit into the scale. You press this button and they will all snap into the scale. So if you're like me and you're just kind of like writing out random notes and seeing how they sound as a chord, this is an easy way to do that. Cause you can just be like beep, 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 beep. And then get them to all cinch in. Uh, next we have this invert button here. So this invert button is the same as what we had in Ableton 11. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take the bottom note and the top note, and it's gonna flip everything upside down so that it's just like whoo, mirrored upside down. And when we do this, check this out, we are gonna get notes that are no longer in the scale. So then you can go ahead and hit fit to scale again, and then they will be snapped into the grid. I love this. I always had a problem with invert because it would maybe sound cool when I inverted it, but then things would be out of key. So I love using fit to scale in addition to invert. Sick. And this is a fun way to just like mix things up. If you want to go from A section to B section, sometimes I'll just invert it, see how the corporation sounds. And sometimes I'll actually end up keeping it. All right, next up we have this add interval option. And this allows us to add intervals on top of or below of our, below of, <laughs> or below our notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit command A and then C as I move this, it's adding notes above and below, depending on the scale degrees that I have set here. So if you wanna do like seven scale degrees, it'll essentially add something an octave below, right? Because we have seven scale degrees in a key. So it can go from this with G3 at the bottom to having G2 at the bottom. And I do love this because beforehand, if you were trying to thicken your sound by adding an extra octave, either you would have to like copy it, duplicate it, hold down shift, press your down arrow, and then move it back. Um, but now either that or drag it down using option, but then I would lose my place and where I was in the MIDI notes. And so, yeah, this is a really fun new feature. Sick, all right, now let's go down to time. So we have stretch here, and this is kind of similar to just using your brackets to stretch out and stretch in, but you can be more uh, specific if you wanna just, you know, hit two, hit enter, it's gonna multiply by two, or if you wanna hit four, it'll multiply it by four etc. So that's a good one to have. And then you obviously still have your divide by two and times by two. If nothing's selected, if you times it by two, everything will just duplicate, like the actual time will duplicate. But if you have any of the notes selected, it will duplicate or have the notes. And then we have the option here to change the length of all the notes. So we can switch them to 16th notes or to 48th notes or to six notes. And this is really useful because sometimes you want all of your notes to be a certain length. And for some reason, some of them are really short and others are really long. And this is a great way to unify them all. And next we have this humanize option, which is really cool. And this will essentially add variation to the start and end points of your notes. The more humanized, the more random, the less humanized, the more on the grid. So adding just a little bit of this is gonna go a long way. And then you also have reverse, and reverse is like inverse, except for we're just flipping things left and right. So this first chord is gonna come to the beginning, and this last chord is gonna get moved to the end. Let's see that. Ha. Huh. 
All right, cool. And last thing we have is legato. And what legato is going to do is it's going to make the end of one note hit the start of the next note. And this is not relevant right now because all of our notes are as extended as possible. But if they were shorter, command A, shift, left arrow, say like this big, if you were to hit legato, they would all move out to the end. So I use legato all the time. And you'll recognize that from Ableton Live 11. All right, so that is our pitch in time utility section here. We also have other MIDI tools like our MIDI transform and our generative MIDI tab. So if you guys wanna learn more about those, I also did videos about them. Hopefully learning Ableton 12 isn't too complicated. I know when I first started diving into this, I was like, no, I don't wanna have to learn Ableton again. But it's already kind of become second nature and I'm excited about a lot of the new features. So I hope that you are as well. Let me know what your favorite feature is below and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.